All right, I want to start off by saying Brakathe Yahweh, Brakathe Yaharashai, Brakathe Yahweh, Brakathe Yaharashai, call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yaharashai, call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yaharashai, by Hashem Raha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists by Hashem in the name of His only begotten Son. The world only calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yahweh Shai, which means he is the Savior. He is the Deliverer for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. By Hashem in the name of the Raha Kadash, which means the Holy Spirit. That gives us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding to be able to know who we are, which are sons of the power, sons of the, uh, the promise, right? That was given to us by Yahweh Hashem Shai. So if you're a so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one of the elect. Yahweh and Ba'ashem Yahweh Ba'ashem Kakadash, that's in the ancient Hebrew. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off not following the law, statute, commandments that was given to us by our forefathers, following after false gods and false idols. But in the latter days, through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, we're able to you know, have mercy and to be able to have that breath of life through the law, such of commandments and to be able to know who we are and knowing who you are, which are the Hebrew Israelites, right? You have to know who your adversary is, right? Which is Esau Edom, right? Esau means wasted away he is and they are the biblical Edomites, the Idumians, the modern day Assyrian, the modern day Chaldean, right? They're the wicked that it will speak, speak about in the scriptures that will have the fatness of the earth, which is the best places, right? And the best resources, and we'll have to live by their sword, okay? And there's many different variations of the sword. You know, you have their deception, you know, as far as uh, calling our Lord a so-called white man, right? Um, you know, calling people extremists if they if they tell the moth, which is the truth, right? And then they have, of course, their physical sword, their, their military bases, their drones, their super soldiers, Right. That's how they're able to, um, you know, engage, you know, their their portion of life as in hell, you know, as it speaks about in Habakkuk. OK, because they're in over 80 countries pushing forth their agenda, their propaganda through the democracy, creating tyrants, creating division amongst the family, you know, putting the woman above the man, uh, man on man, woman on woman, transformers, you know, the kids not knowing um, you know, how, what a true family is because of division, because of war, because of separation. Okay. And people in those families, you know, in different countries, different parts end up what selling out just like in Israel. Okay. That's why there's a two thirds and an elect. And we're praying that we're of that remnant of that elect to make our call and election sure. Right. But our power is in Yahabah Shemar Shai, which is spiritual. And Esau, Edom's power, which is a self-proclaimed white man, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Kennedys, the Soros, the Gates, these are the wicked, okay? That's why you see them pushing forth an agenda with this uh, thing that they put out a couple years ago and pushing forth towards their enterprise, right? Which is their New World Order, which is their Novos Odors Accorium, which is on the back of their dollar bill. And how do they... Um, come close to that by creating order out of chaos, which is order out of chaos in the Latin, by this thing that they have, creating what? Fear-mongering, you know, uh, worry. And what they do is that this order out of chaos is they will create a problem and then they will come in like they're actually helping, right? And another one of the deceptions is calling themselves white. Self-proclaimed, again, I said white, okay? Because white came around in what? the um, 1681. Okay, during after the uh, Bacon Rebellion, uh, um, a war over there in Virginia. Okay, and they they call themselves that because they wanted to justify themselves in uh you know far as slavery. Right, the the transatlantic uh, slave trade. Right, and also costing out our Lord, calling him uh, Jesus Christ when his name is Yahweh Shai. So. You know, this is what this lesson is going to be about. It's going to be covering all those uh, different uh, topics because yesterday we had a, a, a scoffer come up to the camp, you know, um, a heathen. You know, if he wasn't a heathen, he was a two-third. 
okay? And, you know, he was basically trying to, um, you know, put forth his case and who he is, right? So, you know, let's get into it. We have a question today. Do you guys believe in Jesus Christ as a true saver, as a master? Because there's billions of. Okay. So he says, do you believe in, uh, you know, Jesus Christ as the, the master, right? So real quick, the letter J used to be used, and this is in the Wikipedia. I just, you know, screenshotted it. It says the letter J used to be used as a swash. The letter I used for the letter I and the end of Roman numerals when following another I as, okay? And then it has the example. And basically when you go down, it says a guy named... Gion Gijo Trisoni is the one that, you know, founded that word, okay, founded, uh, Slakia, founded that letter, okay, the letter J, and that was brought around uh, 1524, and of course our Lord was over 2,000 years ago, so how does that work, and that's in the English, and we know his name is to be in the Paleo-Hebrew, okay, so right there, you know, that's showing you that that word Jesus does not work, okay? But Yaharashai does because he is and he is the deliverer. He is the savior, okay? So, you know, that's just to point out that, right? So people, they believe in him and they believe in Muhammad. What do you guys believe in? I want to ask you this real Okay, and real quick, he said, you know, Muhammad, which we know that that, that is um, a false philosophy, okay? Because that goes back to what, uh, I think, Allah, okay, which goes back in the Hebrew, which just means power, right? And just to, you know, cut that real quick. Let's see, did I have it already pulled up? Let's see. Oh, yeah, right here. So, you know, I just typed in God's, and it says right here, Psalms 95 and 3. For Adawan Yahweh, which means master, Adawan, uh, Lord is our great God, our great power, and great king above all gods. So all these deities, Zeus, um, you know, even they try to wor worship uh, Baphomet, okay, uh, the Dagon, fish god, uh, you know, all these different Greek and, and, and Roman mythology um, gods, they're all false, and he is above all gods, Psalms 96 and 4. For Adawan Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. All gods. Anything that's created. Right? For all gods of the nations. Uh, Psalms 96 and 5. For all gods of the nations are idols. Yeah, so ideology, which is the fornication of the law. Okay? That's strong drink because you're, you're indulging in these uh, false philosophies. Okay, worshiping these other gods. And we know that Yahabah Shem HaShah is what? A jealous God. And that's why we went into captivity because we were falling after uh, false gods. Even uh, King Solomon, you know, in his latter days was falling after those the false gods because of the women that he was with. Okay. Psalms 97 and 7. Confounded be all that serve graven images and the boast themselves of idols. Worship him and you gods. Okay. For thou art, so it's like for thou, Adamon Yahweh, are high above all earth, thou exalted far above all gods. Again, Psalms 135. For I know that Adamon Yahweh is great, and that our Lord Yahweh is above all gods. Okay? O, Psalms 136 and 2. Oh, give thanks unto the, the God, which is the power of gods, for his mercy endure forever. Because again, he, Isaiah 45 and 7, real quick, showing you the, the balance of our Lord, he's the one that does both sides. He has the left-hand side for Esau, Edom, right? And then he has the right-hand side, which is Yaharashai. And Yaharashai is the one that gives the decree. You know, Yahweh, Yaharashai, and then Yaharashai gives the decree because he gave all power to um, Yahweh Shai. So this is Isaiah 45 and 7. 
I form the light. I create the darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, Adawan Yahweh, do all these things. So anything that you see in this world, Yahweh created through his son, Yahweh Shai. Right? And once you understand that, you can understand that to, to be humble and be meek to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Because he is in control of all things. Okay, Satan, Satan is not the one that's uh, pushing forth an agenda. Okay, it's actually Yahweh. Because again, Exodus 15 and 3, Yahweh is a man of war. That's why you he's made two of everything. Okay, one to honor and one to dishonor. Okay, and in this uh, form, uh, Esau is the one to dishonor. And to honor is Jacob, you know, on the side of Yahweh on the right-hand side, right? Known as that hand. Right? So going back into it. Yeah, we'll go back into the video. Please, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I see, sorry for cutting you, but I have to judge you. Right, right. You seem like a little bit nervous, so just pull off, all right? Okay, okay. Go ahead. Okay, can you step back a little bit? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, you're, 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 so real quick, he said that he has to judge, okay? But he does, he's not out there on the highways and the byways making him body a reason, uh, reasonable sacrifice, right? He's not doing that, okay? And then again, you know, um, I don't know if you guys saw this guy. I'll put it on the, um, you know, the thumbnail. But this guy looks like an Ishmaelite. You know, if, if not, he might even just be um, Esau, okay? Because of his spirit. So this is real quick. He's a natural man, Right? 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah, he's spiritually discerned. Because first he said Jesus Christ, then he said Muhammad, so then he's worshiping two gods. Okay, he's worshiping two gods now, both false idols, both false gods, not above Yahweh by Shema Rashai. Okay, and us being out there is foolishness unto him, but showing that he's a natural man. First Corinthians 2 and 15, but he that is spiritual judge all things, yet himself is judge of no man. So what does it say right there? I'm reading the NLT. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. So this guy can evaluate us because we're coming in, we're coming in that spirit. Okay, we're out there testifying um, you know, with this, the spirit of prophecy, then, right? Which is the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, okay? Because he is this word. He's the one that, um, you know, got to decree to put us out there, to be able to give us the words to speak, the, to be able to stand in great boldness and be able to, um, you know, stand as that great army, okay? Against Esau, Edom, against all these heathen nations, against the flesh, against all these things, to be able to make our calling and living a, a sacrifice, to be able to, um, Lord willing, we endure to the end to, for our salvation. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, For who hath known the mind of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of a Mashiach. Yeah, so we have the mind of a Mashiach. So how is this heathen going to understand? It wasn't given to the heathen, Right? So when he was saying, I have to judge you, he has to judge us because he feels he's he's been exalted over here. Because what these Ishmaelites do is they'll be in the ghettos and the vadios, and what they'll do is they'll own a liquor store, you know what I mean? And then they might give a little bit of, um, you know, they might give people um, a tab or something like that. So people try to stick up for them in the neighborhood. Meanwhile, they're selling you uh, spirits, you know, selling you uh, GMO foods, okay? And they're, they're, their family's living good. Meanwhile, your family's struggling. OK, that's, you know, and that shows you that these are these are uh, dogs, you know, eating the, the wounds of our people as it speaks about in the scriptures. So when that guy said that first Corinthians two and 15, but he that is spiritually judges all things yet himself is not judged by of no man. OK. This guy, this is not he's not part of it. He wasn't given the law, set your commandments. He's a heathen. Right. So going back to it. All right, just put your. So, uh, I want to ask you this. Just chill, all right. I want to ask you this. 
What does Jesus mean? What's the definition of Jesus? He's the true meaning. He came in our life. Are you on this list? Hey, are you? Are you? I want to ask you this. What's your nationality? But why are you putting me on pedestal right now? So we're asking about my nationality. Right? Right, I'm from the Middle East. I'm from the Middle East. So real quick, we didn't put him on a pedestal. We don't, we don't, just like the Lord doesn't care about uh, these other heathen nations, we don't care about them either. Okay? He came up to us just a little bit earlier, um, you know, before this, so the beginning of the session, so about, I think, like 20 minutes before, right? He came up to us, and basically he just said, oh, I just want to, um, I just want to contribute, you know, to God. He just said, God, you know what I mean? And we just, you know, we didn't say anything. We're like, okay. Cool. So he gave the brother some tides, right? And then he walked off, and then he must have saw the posters or something. He must have got offended in the posters, right? Because as he said, right, he's just about to say, he said he's from the Middle East. So where is Israel? Where's Jerusalem? Where's the people? Where's the place? Where's our homeland? Okay, because those are not the, those 48ers are not the people. Those are not the true people, because what do they have? They have uh, synagogues, and they have, um, the or Slaki, they have the mosque right? The Muslim, and they have Christianity, okay? And again, those are not the people because there's not peace over there. It says when we go back over there um, through Yahweh Hashem shot bringing us over there, okay? So you don't just go over there that we were going to have, um, there's going to be peace. There's going to be order, okay? And real quick, because he was saying that, you know, I just have, a, I brought out a map. So this is the Holy Land, Okay? where we were, right? This is uh, then, okay? You know, this is the land. We were over here, right? Not really the best, um, you know, thing, but it's it has the tribes right here, okay? And, you know, which is now uh, um, Palestine, okay? So now, this is now. This is Israel right over here, Okay? So this is considered the Middle East, okay? So, but he said he's from the Middle East. So, but who is he though? Okay, so he identifies as Ishmaelite, and we're going to touch on that, um, you know, in a second. Let's go back to the video. Middle East. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is how I learned Ishmael. This is the Lord? Are yeah. oh, you sure? Yeah. How is, where is the scientific evidence of that? This is Revelation chapter 1. All right, let's see that. Okay, Kun. So he wants scientific uh, evidence, right? So just to get a scripture for that. First Timothy, because this is what Esau likes to do. This is kind of how we got to spiritually discern with this guy, because, you know, he wants that science. He wants that science. You know what I mean? Because there's no way that we can actually know. You know who we are going back to our line because again what they have lost all the records again this is a spiritual thing your spirit has to bear witness with this spirit you have you can't be offended um about it's a so-called that our lord yahweh shai is a so-called black man you can't be offended in that you can't be offended that there's um there's uh, native americans there's you know so-called native americans so-called latinos and so-called blacks and they're all from they're all um part of israel you can't get offended in that OK, and there's a lot of other you can't get offended in the Karagma. There's a lot of different things. So this first Timothy six and 20, just to, you know, just to hit him with the scriptures. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babbling and oppositions of science falsely so called. Yeah. So let me read this in the NLT. First Timothy six and 20. Timothy, guard what Yahweh has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, which this man is, godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. Okay? He's, he's got catfish knowledge. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't, he's not out there teaching anybody. You know, he's just coming with the, you know, he's he he um there was a lot of people out there. You know, it was it was packed like it was um fourth of July or something. I don't know what it really was, right? But um, you know, there was a lot of people out there, right? And so of all the things to do, there's women out there and everything, all the things to do, he, he, he come up to us, you know? Okay. Profane, real quick. Profane, this is the Greek, 952. 
of men, ungodly. Okay? That's just showing who he is. Profane. He's outside the temple. Okay? It's not for these heathen nations. Falsely so-called. Let's get into that. I think it's uh, this one right here. When you go into the root word, it's... Uh, so this is the Greek, 5571. Pseudos. Okay? Lying, deceitful, false. That's what their science is because they, they don't know. They don't know how to make the body. They don't know how the water... Uh, the 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 water goes uh, you know up you know on on the beach and then goes back down. They don't know how the moon is. They don't know how the sun is. They don't know these ordinances because if they did, that means that we're not going to be able to get the promise, which are the Hebrew Israelites, according to Jeremiah thirty one and thirty five. Right. So they just they think because again, Yahweh Shem Shai is the one that gave them the knowledge. Okay, but knowledge puffs puffs up, and pride goes before destruction. Right, and the deceiver and the deceiver are Yahweh Shemir Ashais. Right, so this guy wanted some science. So there it is. There's your science. That's the scriptures, right? Right, getting back to it. No worries, brother. So lock in. Bear with me. All right, let's go back to the video. So actually, let me play a little bit more. Yeah. So, you know, he said a couple of things. Let me let me break that down real quick. Because this is not for the other uh, heathen nations, right? Let me get a couple of scriptures real quick. Because this is what Yaharashai told the disciples, you know, Matthew 10 and 5. These 12 Yaharashai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into the city of Samaritans enter ye not. So sometimes when it says Gentiles, it's actually, you know, that's why you have to go in the Latin or go into the Hebrew. Because sometimes it's actually speaking about, you know, Gentiles and, and uh, um, you know, Israelites that are Gentiles. In a Gentile state of mind, right? So in this, in this, um, you know, sitting, okay, this uh, precept, right? It goes into uh, the Greek, 1484, right? And when you go down the definition, it says, In the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true Yahweh, pagans, okay? And then, so that was, that was the main thing, Okay? Or Slakia. Wait, let's see. Yeah, so Kun. I just want to make sure I said that correctly. So it's just a troop, a swarm. 
Yeah, in the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true Yahweh, pagan and Gentiles. Yeah, so they weren't. Let me just go into it a little bit. Right? So it says, Matthew 10 and 5, these 12 Yaharashai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, right? So I just I was just making sure, you know what I mean? I don't want to give, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, it says, don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, right? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's what we're coming in that same spirit as the disciples, right? Um, we're giving our people warning whether they were here or forbear, um, Ezekiel 33 and 7, right? Ezekiel 33 and 7, where it speaks about, you know, give them warning whether they were here or forbear, so the blood will not be on your hands, okay? And this is Yahweh speaking, and this is a decree, right? As you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and that's what we're letting people know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but we have to repent, be converted, right? And we have to come back to Yahweh Shem Hashem and rehearse the righteous acts, Judges 5 and 11, okay? Because again, this is not for the heathen. Okay, and when he was speaking about, let me get that first. You know, when he was speaking about, he called them Mexican, okay? Because he doesn't believe that um, a so-called Mexican, which is a byword, is actually a, um, a Israelite, okay? Deuteronomy 28 and 37, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations, whether Adawan Yahweh shall lead thee. And are we in captivity right now? And that's why we're called, the guy said what? The word, uh, called us niggas, you know, called, called the brother Mexican, right? When he's actually Issachar. We're coming back to our true heritage. We're not coming back to what Esau calls of us, right? So, again, that word astonishment, astonishment it goes into Hebrews 80, 47. A waste, a horror, an impalement, a waste. Wasteland city, a whore. Yeah, and we're known as a whore. We're known, we got our pants hanging. You know, our people got our pants hanging off their ass. You know, the women are are, are out of order. You know what I mean? Basically rocking around butt naked. And then and then they be, all, you know, they be through. You know what I mean? They got like 10 kids, you know, acting like they still got it. You know, no baby daddy around, you know, out of order. Why? Because Esau Edom has given power to the woman. They have weaponized the woman, right, with their... um. Her name was a Jen, Jen Stammen, okay, with the feminist movement, right? And then also you had, um, what, the um, abortion clinics where, where they kill off the, the children, okay? With uh, Planet Parenthood. Okay, so they put all these things to what? Uh, confound us, to put us at a low level, because again, we were under the curses, right? So when these people call us these certain names... You know, that's why we have on the on the chart that we were showing the guy. We have on one side, we have our Hebrew Israelite names, right? You know, starting for the head tribe of Judah all the way down to the head, uh, you know, down to the tribe of Issachar. And then on the right side, we got so-called black, so-called Mexican, so-called Puerto Rican. Because Puerto Rican means poor, rich. You know, Indian means what? Uh, savage. Okay, black means void of light. You know, and that's just getting into uh, some of them, right? And that's what they, they, they like to call you. Um, they like to call you boy, you know, put you at a low level. Because, again, they've been given their portion right now. So, you know, when he was talking about our Lord, okay, and this is the description of our Lord right here. So this is Revelation 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool okay and i'm going to show you a picture of what wool looks like and wool looks like a so-called uh, a black man because he's from the tribe of judah okay which is the so-called black man the head tribe right the line of jesse david okay white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire right this is uh right here and his feet like unto fine brass so if they burn in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters Okay, and when you go into, you know, um, what is that, fine brass, burned brass, 
right? This is just a picture of it. Okay, that's the color. Does that look like Esau Edom? Does that look like the, the faces that you see, you know, in your grandma's house or your auntie's house, the pictures you used to have up? Okay, this is brass. This is burnt brass, right? This is what the color looks like. Okay, doesn't it look like brown? Shade of brown? Because we're from the ground, right? <laughs> you know, and then so they have a couple other pictures, right? So showing that that guy's a lie. Now, of course, it says Jesus because the world, the name, the name is a secret thing. Okay, if they just put the name in there, they would just take it out, just like they did. Okay, just like they did because in the Hebrew they have it, right? When you go to the Hebrew context, but they don't have it in the English. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, I want to show you a picture of what our Lord would look like, right? So that's the image that they put, you know, on the right hand side, you know, again, you know, blonde hair, you know, blue eyes. Now, some of our people are going to look like that, but we're talking about our Lord, how he looks. OK, because, again, we were spread all across the um, four corners of the earth. You know, and some of us are going to be looking like like it says, you know, my heritage is of a speckled bird. We're going to be looking like the other nations. Again, that's a curse. But when you go in the kingdom, you're going to go back to your regular um, complexion. You know, which is a, which is a shade of brown, shades of brown, right? So, and on the left side, that's what our, our Lord would look like, similar, okay? At least a similar image, okay? The woolly hair, does he have, you know, he doesn't have the stringy hair. And again, our Lord wouldn't have long hair, okay? Because again, that's against the commandments, okay? A man, um, a man, a uh, woman's um, glory is in her hair, not in a man. A man shouldn't be like a, a, like a woman. Okay, and that's how you know, <laughs> right there. You know that's a depiction, right? So just to give a you know imagery of it, and going into another scripture where it speaks about that, right? How our Lord looked, and His Son is the same way. Okay, it says um, in the scriptures it says, "If you see me, then you see my, uh, if you see me, then you see my Father." I'm a, basically, I'm a splitting image of him, right? So this is Daniel. This is Daniel. Uh, let me just get to the point. Yeah, so... Yeah, let me just get to the point. Daniel 6... Or, Slakia, Daniel 10 and 6. His body also was like a barrel... And his face of an appearance of lightning, and his eyes a lamp of fire, and his arms and his feet were in the color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Okay? His arms and his feet shone like polished bronze. Okay? And we already brought out what bronze looks like. Okay? It's different shades of brown. Right? So what that guy was talking about is off. Then he came with the Jesus. Then he came with Muhammad. See, it's through. Real quick. 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. And again, this is not for the heathens. They're not going to have the understanding. Right? And even two-thirds of our people are not going to have the understanding. So I'm going to get it. 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel, which is the good news, be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Okay, they have a veil around them. You know, they have the angels, you know, covering covering them from seeing it, from hearing it. Second Corinthians four and four. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of which believe not. And who's the God of this world? Satan, the adversary. Okay, which which means opposing Yahweh Shemashai, which he's abomination, which we know in the flesh that's Esau Edom, because who covered the face nine uh Job nine and twenty four? Who covered the faces of the judges thereof when? Um, you know, around the 1300s when they came out of that headshot wound and they came into power, right? They came in what? A strange from the womb telling lies. And one of their lies was what? Um, he's a so-called white man, a pale white man. And then they, they put up the image of the babies of the angels, right? So-called little white babies, okay? When when they're actually austere and they got uh, their bronze too, okay? As it speaks about in the scriptures. But again, the God of this world has blinded, you know, not just our people, but blinded these other heathen nations too. Second Corinthians, the only ones that have the eyes out to see it, 
are the people that are the slakia, are the elect, are the remnant. Lord willing, we endure. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Amashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. That's right. Because that light, you know, that goes into Isaiah 61. Arise and shine. You know, for the light has come, the light is upon you. Right? And that light is what? In a dark place. And when you're in a dark place, you want to what? You want to have light to be able to what? See. Okay? So that's what Yahweh Shemar Shai is doing. He's giving us light in a dark place. Because isn't this known as the valley of shadow of death? Isn't uh, Job, what is that? Job 10 and 20? Or uh, it's like it. Job 10 and about 21 and 22. You know, the darkness. Okay, the darkness means the confusion. Confusion of what? Esau Edom with his deceit and his uh, um, illusions, his enchantments. Because again, that's another one of his sword is his uh, enchantments, his witchcraft, you know? Right? So let's... A couple more scriptures. And these other heathen nations have sucked the wound, wounds of us dry. You know, they've eaten everything that we have, you know? That's why you see them right there in the ghettos and the vadios, you know, take... Um, you know, with uh, businesses, they come over here with like 25,000 and then they, they um, you know, they combine each other together and then they buy all these stores. And then what do they do? They push it in the, in the Jake neighborhoods, uh, you know, GMO foods, you know, spirits, right? All, all sorts of abominations. And these heathens right now, they want to help build the temple. Like I said, that guy, he came up and he was, um, he gave us tides actually. And then he came up and mocked and scoffed. So this is Ezra's four and three. This is just an account by Zura Zura Bobby Zaki. I butcher that. Uh, and and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, "You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our power Yahweh, but we ourselves together will build unto Adawan Yahweh of Israel, as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us." So again, these heathens tried to come in. And build the temple. And what we said, no, nah, we're going to build it ourselves. And that's what we're doing right now. First Corinthians 3 and 16. We're building a spiritual temple and we are in the body of Yahweh Shai. That's why you don't defile your temple. Okay. And just real quick, these are these uh, crafty nations that have consulted together, you know, in the United uh, Nations, you know, the United Nations General Assembly, you know, the Bohemian Grove, you know, the kings of this earth, they have all consulted together to hide who we are because they know once we come in power, once we come to Yahweh Shemir Shai, that true power, they know what we were like before. You know, Yahweh was known as the El Shadi, which is demon-like power, which means his intelligence, we're warlike. That's what wisdom means, you know, your intelligence in war. Because that's who's going to be able to what survive, okay? Right now we're right now we're in a spiritual war. Then there's going to be a physical war, as far as with the chariots, first with the intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? And then the chariots are going to come. Uh, uh, Daniel's twelve and one, a time of trouble like never before. Lord willing, we're on that right hand side. We'd be able to be saved, right? But you have to believe. Psalms eighty three and three. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And who are those hidden ones? Okay, those are the Israelites, the so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. They have conspired together to what? Go against the precious ones. Zechariah 2 and 8, where it speaks about the apple of Yahweh by Shemar Shai's eye. Right? Psalms 83 and 4, they have said, Come and let us cut, um, cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So they cut off all the uh, physical things, but they didn't think about... You know, all the cardinal things, but they didn't think about the spiritual. Okay? They never thought about the, the spirit that was going to come, that breath of life that was going to come in the bodies, those those dead bodies, spiritually dead bodies, and was going to bring to life through prophecy, which is the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Right? And remembrance shows that we were already there. Okay? This is not new. Right? But this time we're going to be saved by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Right? For they have consulted together, one consent, they are confederate against thee. 
Okay, yes, this was their anonymous decision. They signed treaties. They signed treaty as allies against you. So when you think about this beast system, which is the whore of Babylon, which is America, okay, they it's known as the, the great whore. And what has this whore done? All the abominations, rape, rob, and murder. And they have consulted together with NATO and EU, the Ten Horns, okay? And they have consulted together to hide who we are. That's why we don't go to the um, United Nations General Assembly. And if someone does, well, they're, they're sellouts, right? Psalms 83 and 6, the tabernacles of Edom, okay? And who's Edom? Esau, Esau is Edom. Okay, Genesis 36 and 1, right, which is the self-proclaimed white man and the Ishmaelites. Okay, and the Ishmaelites is what that dude was. Okay, Iran. Okay, as the brother was saying, you know, the camel junkies, right? You know, because even they're called, um, you know, Esau calls them sand niggas. So, you know, and but they're joined together with them. Why? Because they're, they, they're in them with, with trade, with oil. Because they have kings and uh, princes over there, right? They're living off the hog, right? As, as I want to bring out in Genesis, um, you know, 16 and 17, right? And that's the second one. And that's why he's coming up because he sees that his reign, his life in Babylon the Great is not going to be so great. Because why? Because there's gonna, the kingdom is going to be translated from because of ill-gotten gains. Because that physician, which is your Harashai, is going to cut off that long disease, which is Esau Edom, which means that these other heathen nations can't eat either. Because again, it's a translation, but it comes by blood. Your Harashai gave his blood, and that's what he's coming for. Because blood, because you love blood, blood shall pursue thee. And that goes for these other heathen nations too, because they conspired, as we read, as we read a little bit um, up in the scripture, right? It says the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Of Moab, right, and the, the Mo, uh, Moab is the Moabites, the Hagarines, okay, Jebi, Ammon, which is the Japanese, right, Amalek again, which is Esau, Edom, Amalek is the head tribe, okay, and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, right, Ashur is also joined with them. They have, they have hope in the children of Lot. Okay, so it says that Syria has joined them to and is allied with the descendants of Lot. Okay, and the Syrian is also known as that rod of anger that Yahweh Hashem Rashai has sent forth. Right, you know, and you got the, the Hamites in there. Okay, they have consulted together. You know, and that's why they're going to be, these are the people that are going to be first put in chains. You know, well, the first people going to be put in chains is Esau Edom, the head of Esau Edom, you know, when they're in those bunkers. They're going to be brought out. But then these are going to be the next people that are going to be in line. They already have their name. They already, you know, it's already been written. Psalms, uh, no, Sakya, Isaiah 46 and 10. Right? Yeah, the Phoenicians, right? The Assyrians, the Hamites. Okay? They're all going to get put and rule. They're going to be under rulership under Yaharashai. How about Shemir Ashai? And Lord willing, we're joint heirs with that if we endure. You know, so getting into that, you know, as far as the Ishmaelites, because that guy was, he was either an Ishmaelite or an Edomite. Okay. And these other nations, real quick. Actually, let me, let me go to this one first. This is Genesis 16 and 15. And it reads, and Hagar bare Abraham's son, and Abraham called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. Whoa, those are the Ishmaelites. Hagar, who was that? That was a maid, okay? That was not what? Let's get into it. Showing you that they're not of the promise, okay? They're just of the flesh. Genesis 17 and 21 Right? Right here. So this is Genesis 17 and 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, and Isaac was Yaharashai, if you could receive it, which Sarah, not Hagar, shall bear unto thee as a set time in the next year. And he left off taking with him Yahweh and went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael and his son. 
and all that were born in his house and all that were brought with his money and every male among the men of Abraham's house circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same, self same day as Yahweh had said unto him. Yeah, so what happened? They took, they took Ishmael to another land, right? Yeah, because because the covenant was established with Isaac, and Isaac had what uh, Esau and um, Jacob. Okay, Esau to dishonor and and Jacob to honor. Okay, and Jacob has the promise, right? Because again, he um, Jacob, which was already meant for him, surplanted Esau. Okay, for one more so of me, I'm going to get that too, and that's why you see. Ishmael, they're able to be all right. They have their land and everything like that. They have their oil and they live like kings and princes. Okay, because again, they're in that crafty council. I just want to see if I had... Yep, so I got all that. All right. So, you know, going into uh, Esau, because he could have been, he could, he could have been coming in the spirit of Esau. Too, because again, we were spread around because he had a wicked spirit on him. Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane, again, that profane word again, person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Yeah, he sold his birthright. And what did he do? He cried out to Isaac as Genesis um, 27 and about 39. He cried out and what did uh, Isaac give him? Isaac gave him the fatness of the earth and the sword he had to live by, Right. And it says Hebrews 12 and 17, and this is why he's mad. For ye know that that afterward, when would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. What? He was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. Yeah, so Esau, Edom, when you're going to the Zondervan um, Bible, right? Um, it says that Esau is the only nation that won't, won't uh, you know, get repentance. Okay, won't be able to go back in their land, Right? Because after a thousand years, they're going to be cut off. They're going to be stubble. Obadiah 1 and 18. Right? And that's why every time he shoots off a missile or he puts a chemtrail in the air, what is he doing? He's crying out. Because what do you think, um, when you when you try to come in with a new world order, right? That's not because you're, you're doing good. That's because you have no other options. Right? And these other heathen nations are counted as nothing. Uh, but a bucket of spittle. Let me get that. And again, your spirit has to bear witness with our spirit. And that, and right, real quick, that our spirit didn't bear witness with his. First John four and one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of Yahweh, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So our spirit didn't bear witness with his spirit, and we should be all be on one accord, which. Showing you that this is spiritual because he wanted to, again, have that science, right? And let me just uh, cut that real quick again. Spirit had me uh, come back to that. So this is Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. Okay, that's how we know that we're the children of Yahweh because we, what, the curses, okay, that we have woken up to this truth because it said this word will not go to a heathen. Right, they don't. They won't be able to uh, spiritually understand. First Corinthians one and ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yahweh Hamashiach, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but there are perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. And that's that's what he wasn't in. He was in the natural man, and we're in the spiritual man. So that's how we can be able to judge him. And we weren't putting him on no pedestal. Or whatever that he that he said, okay. He came up to us, you know, trying to inquire uh, about, you know, because he must have saw the poster and he was offended, and that's cool because Isaiah eight and fourteen says he will be a rock of offense, <laughs> and he came to set a variance. So, you know, and so I want to get this Isaiah forty and fifteen. 
Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. They are counted as small as dust. The balance, behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. So when you're carrying a bucket of water, you're not worried about a little bit spilling out. You're just going to keep going, which shows you that they, these other nations ain't shit. You know, Isaiah 40 and 17, all nations before him are nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Yeah. And that's what they're counted as. Okay. As the prophet Isaiah, you know, said that our Lord was speaking about, right? And this is the word Hebrews 84 and 14, right? This is the word vanity, formlessness, formlessness, confusion, unreality, emptiness. Yeah, they're empty. Why? Because their souls are dry bones. That's two thirds of our people too. That which is empty, unreal, idols, wasteland, wilderness, Okay, place of chaos. Isn't this place of chaos? Constant destruction. You go outside, you might think it's sunny, but then there's chemtrails in the air. Then you got false philosophies. You got people driving crazy. Right? <laughs> you know? And that's vanity. So I'll read that again. Isaiah 40 and 17. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. Okay? And what nation is uh, so nigh to him? Real quick. Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is the wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statues and, shall, and say, Surely this great nation is wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath Yahweh, the power so nigh unto them as Adawan Yahweh, our power, is in all things that we call upon him for. Yeah, so even at a lowest state where the we invent the most things, we invented everything, okay, we're the best, uh, you know, sports, the best at food. And then I'm talking about this is all the, the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? Not just one tribe, right? We're the salt of the sea. Real quick, another scripture. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for thou art a holy people unto Adawan Yahweh thy God. Adawan Yahweh, Bashim Yahashai, had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. What does that say? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So when why in the scriptures it says, Why trimmest thou ways to seek love? So why are you trying to be like Esau, Jay-Z, Puff Daddy, all you wicked ass Jakes? Again, because the gospel is hid to them, right? Let's see if it has anything for special. Possession, property, valued property, peculiar treasure. And that's what we're known as. Um, Yaharashai is known as our husbandman, and we are known as what? The wife. Okay? That's why we, um, you know, that's why um, we got punished. Because we weren't we weren't being loyal to to our husbandmen, right? Yeah, and that's that word peculiar, right? Had chosen to choose elect Hebrews nine seven seven to choose elect decide for to be chosen, and are we preordained? Lord willing, we endure to the end to be chosen, selected. Ishmael didn't get none of that. He had to go, you know, send off in his land and he'll he'll be he'll be a great nation, but that's it. <laughs> he never said peculiar. Never said chosen. None of that. Okay. You know, when that goes into uh Romans 9 and 4, you know, pertaining to the adoption, right? And I just want to get one more scripture because these other heathen nations have eat off our um, you know, they were happy when we went down, okay. Lamentations 2 and 15, and we're going to be happy when they're down, okay? And that's going to be everlasting, though. They're, theirs is but for a moment. Lamentations 2 and 15, all that pass by and clap their hands of thee, they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, and we're known as the daughter of Jerusalem, right? Saying, this is the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth, right? So they're mocking, they're insulting. Let me read this in the NLT, Lamentations 2 and 15. All who pass by cheer as they scoff and insult beautiful. And don't they say, oh, you know, look at them niggas. Look at them, 
you know, Mexicans, you know, they, they always have, and then they have their little slur words that they have, that they have for us. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll run all the way across the street. You know what I mean? When they're, they're the real thieves. Okay. All who pass by and cheer at they scoff and insult beautiful Jerusalem saying, is this the city called most beautiful in all the world and joy of all the earth? It says, and again, in the NLT Lamentations 2 and 16, all your enemies mock you. They scoff and snarl and say, we have destroyed her at last. We have long waited for his day for this day. And it is finally here. And what did they do? They consulted together. They became allies. Okay. With the treaty. Okay. To come against you, to consult against thy hidden one. Psalms 83. Okay. And every idle word that they came against us is going to be um, accounted for. Let me get that. And every idle word that he said, you know, coming up against the uh, the pastors of Yahweh Hashem Rashai's heart, right? Matthew 12 and 36. But I say unto you, this is Yahweh Rashai speaking, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. And we know these words do not go out void, okay? He's not a man that would lie, right? So every idle word that that that, that uh, wicked, uh, whatever that he was, profane person, He's going to account for in the day of judgment, right? Let me end it right here. Because ultimately, this is what it is. Luke 10 and 16. This is your Shai Hamashiach speaking. I'm going to read it in the King James Version, then the NLT. It says in the King James Version first, He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Yeah, they despise Yahweh. Okay, Luke 10 and 16, and they despise the word, which is Yahweh Shai. And they despise the men that he preordained to what? Push this word. Lord willing, we endure to be the, that elect and that remnant. So right here is the last verse, Luke 10 and 16. Then he said to the disciples, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. So anyone that accepts this message, those fruits, okay, they're accepting Yahweh Shem Shai. Okay, and anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. So that that dude right there, right? He was rejecting. He rejected Yahweh Shai. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting Yahweh who has sent me. Okay. And when you when you do that, this is what happens. And I'll end it on this scripture. Proverbs thirteen and thirteen. Who would despise it? The word. Who's the word? Yahweh Shai. And if you despise Yahweh Shai, you despise him that sent him, which is Yahweh, okay, which is the power of all things, right? Who despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. And what's that reward? Immortality and salvation, okay? Uh, sovereignty, you know, being above all the nations, right? It says in the NLT, people who despise advice are asking for trouble. <laughs> Those who respect a command will succeed, okay? It says, the instruction of the wise is like a life-giving fountain. Those who accept it avoid the snares of death. And who is the death? Esau, Edom. So with that, Rakatha Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Call Halal Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Kwam Yashallah. Shalom to the elect.